Hi, this is Denise Matthew, and welcome to the fifth episode of The Energy of Emotion. Today, we'll dive deeper into the emotionally defined solar plexus and discover all the secrets that it has to tell. In our last episode, we talked about the channel 4037, as well as how the hanging gates 40 and 37 express themselves. Today, we'll talk about the tribal emotional wave 596, how it differs from the other emotional tribal waves, as well as how the energy shows up when the gates 59 or 6 are hanging. With that said, let's get started and discover a little more about the energy of emotion. The channel 596 is tribal energy, and it's one of the three tribal emotional waves and is all about continuing humanity by reproducing and ensuring that there are future generations to carry on life on our planet. Tribal energy is as expected. It's all about the tribe or the people that you consider to be your people. They can be family, close friends, even a group that you belong to. The key theme with tribal energy is that it's about some level of bonding. When you carry tribal energy, you might like family get-togethers, rituals, and routines that bring the tribe together. The 59-6 is part of what's called the defense circuit, which is made up of the channel 5027 and the channel 59-6. The 59-6 is the only emotional wave in the defense circuit and is specific to generator types since it connects the sacral to the solar plexus. While the 5027 side of the defense circuit talks about caring for babies, nurturing, cooking, and all the things needed to bring offspring to adulthood, the 59-6 side of the circuit is all about what comes before the offspring show up in the world. Since the 5027 is a channel that comes off the spleen and the spleen is all about the fears that we have when someone carries the 5027, there can be a fear of getting it right when you're taking care of the people that you love the most. On the opposite side is the 596, and this is all about raw emotion that can be passionate from a sexual nature as much as it can be a passion to go to war to protect your tribe. This is raw energy that melds intimacy, war, as well as protection. Although tribal waves can simmer in the background unnoticed, when the 59-6 is activated, there can be a need to protect that overwhelms the person who carries it, sometimes to the point where rationality goes out the window. As I just mentioned, the 59-6 channel comes with a level of sexual intimacy, and it talks about the connections that need to happen for procreation. All emotional waves, including the 59-6, come with a need for clarity, or the concept that only after someone has gone through a full emotional wave will they see the best choices for them. So because of this emotional component, when someone jumps into a sexual relationship without clarity, the relationship may not survive. Another interesting fact about the channel 59-6 is that it's considered aura busting. In other words, people who carry it get noticed. So in that way, it's considered to be a powerful energy where the person who carries it can be broadcasting their emotions and potentially change the emotional energy around them, especially with people with open solar plexus. This aura busting quality also acts like a vortex where everyone in the family is pulled into this energy. This energy that forms bonds to create children can just as easily create projects, ideas, and new ways of thinking. This is good for making babies as well as for making the money to support the babies. Bonds made with this energy can be potent for creativity and for bringing life and creative projects into form. As I mentioned before, the energy vortex of the 59-6 can draw family together or the people they need to help them create what they want to create. Some people will feel at ease with this energy while others will want to step away. So if we see this tribal energy in play, we're looking at Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. Now, before Prince Harry was married, he was considered an easygoing person, easygoing guy. He dated people. He, he seemed to have a lot of fun. But after he married Meghan Markle, it seemed as though his demeanor changed considerably. In fact, he was very protective of her and he still remains protective of her. Now, with the addition of the new baby, it seems he's even more protective of the family than he was before. And it makes a lot of sense when you look at their chart. Meghan Markle has an open emotional center, which means she's amplifying the energy of Prince Harry. And Prince Harry has the 59-6 tribal wave. He also has the 35-36, but I'm going to talk about the 59-6 because I think that's the one that's activated the most with this protectiveness that he's shown since he's gotten married. And you can see that Prince Harry has almost the full defense circuit on his own and then if you add Meghan Markle's energy they have the full defense circuit so this is an extremely protective energy of their family and their offspring. My mum clearly taught me a certain set of values 
of which I will always try and uphold. So I will always protect my family, and now I have a family to protect. Um, so everything that everything that she went through and what happened to her is incredibly raw every single day, and that's not me being paranoid, that's just me not wanting a repeat of, of the past. So Harry's behavior changed when he married Meghan Markle, and a lot of people blame it on her. Looking at it from a purely human design perspective, it seems as though the energy was there all along in Harry, but it just became active when he had a family and also when they completed the defense circuit between the two of them. When someone has a gate 59 hanging, it's about intimacy and also considered the gate of dissolving barriers. What most people will talk about when they talk about the gate 59 is the sexy energy that people exude when they carry it. And while this might be true, it isn't the only dimension of this gate. So let's tackle the sexy energy theme and what that means first. Like we already said, the 59 is part of the defense circuit and it's where all the energy for reproduction and continuation of humanity lives. So if there's a job for the 59, it would be to serve as a flashing sign on the storefront that encourages people to check out what's inside. The energy of the 59 definitely can have a sexual component because sexual attraction is the beginning of procreation. The sexual component can sometimes be something people work with to exude, or it can also be expressed innocently. The bottom line is it's all about energy. With the hanging gate 59, the sexual energy can be amped up, and since it's all about the energy, people can give off a sexual aura even without trying. So it means that sometimes when you carry this energy, your attentions may be innocent, but they can come off as a sexual invitation. For this reason, and for lack of better words, people might get hit on a lot since it's easy to get the energy misconstrued where people believe that you are interested in them romantically, even if that's the furthest thing from your mind. Clear communication of your intentions is one of the most important parts of carrying the 59 energy so that everybody knows exactly what page they're on. This energy is more about the intimacy and bonding as we said before, but it's not necessarily a sticking around kind of energy. So that's why the gate 59 can sometimes be called the gate of the Casanova. And because there is so much raw sexual charisma with this kind of energy, there's always potential for people who carry this energy to make that the prime focus of their life. In its highest form, the gate 59 talks about someone who needs to get to know their romantic partner before committing to a relationship or even sex. Now, if we talk about the dissolving barriers part of the gate 59, we talk about an intimacy that goes beyond the physical and can be deep connections that don't have a sexual component. We could also say that when someone carries this energy, they can eliminate barriers to concepts, new ideas, or ways of thinking. A prime example of the energy used this way was Mother Teresa of Calcutta. When we talk about hanging gate six, we see that many things in life are emotionally driven and not rational, especially where tribal energy is concerned. The gate six has the responsibility of bringing clarity to these emotional situations. That means it can be difficult sometimes to remain in the center with all the lurching back and forth between the extremes. When we talk about the gate six, it's all about the things we need to do to protect and sustain our tribe to the point of sometimes being overprotective. This can be the energy of the mother who in a time of crisis is able to lift a car off their child. It can just as easily be the aggression that comes when someone messes with the people that matter to you the most, meaning your family, your friends, and basically anyone in your tribe. This is the energy for somebody who can be a natural arbitrator, who can bring peaceful solutions so both sides of a conflict feel satisfied. There isn't necessarily any nurturing in the gate six. It's more of a need to protect and provide for the person that you're intimate with or who's part of your tribe. The end justifies the means. So if that means that you have to work long hours and be away from your tribe or your family, then that's accepted as something that needs to be done to support the tribe. It's penetrating, emotional, and can be influential. And the archetype would be yang energy. So that's all for today, and please be sure to tune in next time when we talk about the last tribal wave, the 1949. We'll talk about how it shows up as a channel, as well as how the Hanging Gates 19 or 49 show up. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you soon.